All right, here's a slightly more difficult example. Suppose we mix three different amounts of water, some hot water, some cool water, and some cold water. So we have our hot and our cold and also an intermediate temperature. And specifically, this is what we have. 150 grams of water at 80, degree, 80 degrees Celsius. That's the hot water. 83 grams at 40 degrees Celsius. And then 170, degree, 170 grams at 10 degrees Celsius. That's the cold water. We mix those together. What's the final temperature? Well, now here's the ambiguity in this problem. Let's draw a little thermometer. And let's imagine our hot temperature here is 80 degrees Celsius. And our cold temperature is 10 degrees Celsius. And then there's this intermediate temperature here of 40 degrees Celsius. Now, we know when we mix these together, the hottest thing in there is 80 degrees, and the others are colder. So our final temperature is going to be somewhere below 80 degrees. And the coldest thing here is at 10 degrees Celsius, and the other things are warmer. So the final temperature will, will be there above 10 degrees. But we can't really tell just at a glance if the final temperature is going to be here above the 40 or here below. And it makes a difference in setting up the problem. The setup ends up being a little bit different each way. And you might think, well, the 40 is closer to the 10, so the 40 is kind of like a cold thing as well. So maybe the 40 ends up warming up and the final temperature is here. Um, the problem with that is, look at the 10 degrees. There's more of it. There's more of the cold water. So maybe that causes the final temperature to end up down here below 40. We just don't know at a glance. We have to do the math to tell for sure. And here's two possible ways that this can be set up. Let's set it up once here, assuming that the final temperature is down here, Tf. In this case, the hot water is cooling off that much, and the cool water is cooling off that much, and then the cold water is heating up that much. In this case, these two, the hot water and the cool water, are both losing heat, and the cold water is gaining heat. And the conservation of energy still has to apply. So I would say the heat lost, the heat lost by the hot water, plus the heat lost by the cool water, these things are both cooling down until they reach this temperature. That heat loss from both of those causes the cold water to warm up. And it warms up to that temperature. So those two together, the heat lost by the hot plus the heat lost by the cool water equals the heat gained by the cold water. The heat gained by the cold water. Now the problem with saying this is this. We don't know that the final temperature really ends up down here below 40 instead of above 40. If we have this, I'll do this in a different color. If the final temperature were really right there, then we would have the hot water cooling down and we would have both of the other two, the cool water and the cold water, warming up to this temperature. And the setup would look like this. The heat lost by the hot water, I'll write that. The heat lost by the hot water, in that case, that heat called the, the hot water losing heat and dropping in temperature, that heat goes into the cool water and the cold water warming up. So that equals the heat gained in this case by the cool water plus the heat gained by the cold water. So there's two possible ways to set this up. And the question is, which one is correct? Does the final temperature end up above 40 or below 40? If it ends up 
above 40, we would set it up one way. If it ends up below 40, we set it up another way. Which one do we use? The answer is it doesn't matter. If you set it up one way or the other, either way you'll get an equation and you'll solve for the final temperature. That's what we're trying to find here. What is the final temperature? And in either case, you'll get the same answer for the final temperature. So what I'm going to do is set up the problem this way using the first equation. We could use either one. I'll just set it up using the first equation and work out the answer. 